Step back in time to the small town of Mayberry, where Sheriff Andy Taylor and his quirky band of friends filled our screens with laughter, heartwarming moments, and even a few surprises. The Andy Griffith Show, a beloved television series from the 1960s, captured the essence of Americana with its down-to-earth humor and relatable characters. But did you know that behind the scenes, there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts waiting to be uncovered? Keep watching this video to learn more about the fascinating anecdotes and lesser-known details that make The Andy Griffith Show even more intriguing. Have you ever wondered about the cherished memories people hold for this classic TV series? Perhaps you have your own personal experience or favorite episode that brings a smile to your face. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the commentaries below. The Andy Griffith Show first aired in the 1960s and quickly became a much-loved classic. It's set in a pretend town called Maybury and follows Sheriff Andy Taylor, played by Andy Griffith. His deputy, Barney Fife, played by Don Knotts, and his Aunt Bee, played by Francis Bovia, also play significant roles. The show mainly focuses on the everyday lives of the townspeople, often showing funny misunderstandings and accidents. Andy's calm and clever ways help solve problems that come up, whether they're small or big. Maybury's cozy atmosphere adds to the show's charm with its friendly streets and characters. Even though it's simple, The Andy Griffith Show talks about important things like friendship, family, and camaraderie, which many people still appreciate. The show has won many awards and is well-loved for its great acting and its influence on TV. Its warm portrayal of small-town life has left a big impression on popular culture, making it one of the most cherished TV shows ever. In The Andy Griffith Show, actor Howard McNear, who portrayed Floyd the Barber, faced challenges due to a severe stroke. To create the illusion of standing, a special stool was designed. In some scenes, he was half-sitting or leaning, while in others, he sat in his barber's chair or on a bench outside his shop. McNear's talent extended beyond television. He earned a nomination for a 1973 Joseph Jefferson Award for Best Guest Artist for his role in The Mine with a Dirty Man at the Arlington Theater in Chicago, Illinois. One of the show's recurring gags involved Andy and Barney receiving postcards or letters from the Eubacher brothers, a group they had arrested and sent to prison. The brothers wrote about their experiences behind bars and occasionally sent gifts made in the prison workshop. Andy and Barney often discussed taking a day off to visit them. In The Andy Griffith Show, Barney consistently keeps his bullet in his left pocket, except in the episode where he's preparing to foil a bank robbery where it's in his right. James Best, who appeared in the 1958 movie The Left-Handed Gun, later co-starred with Griffith as his sheriff in The Dukes of Hazard 21 years later. Additionally, Ron Howard's father and brother, Rance Howard and Clint Howard, co-starred with Griffith in his final movie, Play the Game. These connections highlight the close-knit relationships among the cast across various projects. Following the recent passing of Maggie Peterson, only four members of the original cast of the series remain Ron Howard, Clint Howard, Rodney Dillard, and Eleanor Donahue. Eleanor Donahue opted not to return for subsequent seasons after the first, citing a lack of on-screen chemistry with Andy Griffith. Griffith later acknowledged his difficulty portraying affection on screen, leading to their relationship appearing less genuine. In contrast, Griffith had no qualms expressing affection toward Anita Corsout. The two frequently flirted and spent private moments together despite Griffith being married at the time. Throughout the series, Aunt Bee's character initially portrayed a charming small-town matron. However, as the show transitioned to color, her character evolved to become more brittle, superstitious, and self-delusional. In Sumalantrary, The Andy Griffith Show, which began in 1960, now has only four surviving cast members, and Eleanor Donahue's departure after the first season was influenced by her perceived lack of on-screen chemistry with Andy Griffith. Aunt B's character underwent changes over the series, transforming from a charming matron to a more complex and superstitious personality in the color era. The Andy Griffith Show, known for its portrayal of Sheriff Taylor by Griffith, became a hit due to its relatable and honest depiction of a Kamalamtarunity leader. Ron Howard later suggested that during a tumultuous time like JFK's assassination, the nation sought a regular guy figure to admire. The character Barney often courted a waitress named Juanita Beasley, as revealed in an episode titled Andy Forecloses, written in Barney's ticket book. This added depth to Barney's character and provided humor to the show. In 1988, Griffith had a recurring guest role on Matlock, 
reuniting him with his old friend Andy Griffith 20 years after their collaboration on The Andy Griffith Show. The Andy Griffith Show, a beloved TV series from the 1960s, featured episodes where Andy and Barney encountered out-of-town criminals, often played by former members of movie troops, the Dead End Kids, and the Bowery Boys. The show also showcased the acting talent of Howard McNear and Parley Bear, known for their roles on the radio version of Gunsmoke as Doc Adams and Chester. During the filming of A Face in the Crowd in 1957, director XXXXX advised Griffith on the subtleties of acting, emphasizing the importance of conveying emotions through the eyes. This advice resonated with Griffith throughout his career, influencing his portrayal of Sheriff Andy Taylor. When Ron Howard turned nine, he got an 8mm camera as a gift from Andy Griffith and Aaron Rubin. Joanna Moore's southern accent was real because she grew up in America's Georgia. Daniel Device wrote a book called Andy and Don the Making of a Friendship and a classic American TV show. It talks about the strong friendship between the actors and how they made the sitcom we all love. It was Francis Bavia portrayed B. Taylor, Andy's aunt, throughout the series and in the sequel, Mayberry RFD. Bavia, in real life, remained unmarried and childless. Hope Sumalimiterers, daughter of Congressman John William Sumalimiterers and Virginia Sumalimiterers, had two brothers who pursued successful business careers and later joined the diplomatic corps. During Jack Byrne's tenure as Deputy Warren Ferguson, the scripts originally intended for Don Knotts Barney Fife were utilized. This substitution occurred seamlessly in the show's narrative. These character details offer insights into the lives of the actors, blending personal and professional aspects. Frances Bovia's choice to remain single mirrors her on-screen character, while Hope Sumalimiter's family background adds an interesting dimension to her persona. The behind-the-scenes decision to repurpose scripts for a new character, Deputy Warren Ferguson, showcases the pragmatic approach to maintaining continuity. In Sumalimiterary, the cast members brought unique personal backgrounds to their roles, contributing to the show's authenticity. The use of recycled scripts testifies to the adaptability required in television production. The Andy Griffith Show, a popular TV series from the 1960s, was canceled after eight seasons. Andy Griffith, the lead actor, chose to pursue other projects, focusing on a movie career. Mary and Peggy, characters on the show, served as nurses for the county. The show's theme song, theme for the Andy Griffith Show, became iconic, but also the subject of a lawsuit. The heirs of the songwriters, Earl Hagen and Herbert W. Spencer, filed a federal court suit against CBS. They claimed that CBS used the song without a proper license. The rights to the theme music were transferred to various trusts after the songwriters' deaths. The heirs sought an injunction to stop CBS from using the theme without authorization and demanded damages for copyright infringement. CBS has not yet come on the matter.